Good evening. Um, so business developments in 2022 and the initial stages of 2023 have been very much centred around improving the offer to our members and customers. Along with, we're very conscious that we operate in a, a very difficult environment. So wherever possible, we're trying to make the in-store operations and the day job that much easier. But ultimately, it's about delivering a tangible uh, business benefit. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of these that we've, we've done. So the first one is we've reviewed the field management team and the support network to our food stores. And as a result, we've recruited two new food operations managers um, whose main focus will be very much centred around driving day-to-day -day improvement in store standards whilst developing and supporting our in-store teams. Um, I yeah, apologise for the pictures, they, uh, they don't take a great picture, admittedly. Um, but what I would say is they're both experienced uh, in, the, in, the in the operational field. And I think what's really key is both gents have run one of our food stores recently, um, so they're fully aware of what, what we are, how the challenges that we face as a business, and they have a great understanding of what's required. Again, we've mentioned there about bringing additional benefits and reasons to use our shops. Barry's alluded to earlier in, the, in his presentation about impost. So we're going to run a trial in five stores, and they, that is Beehive Lane, Danbury, Rittle, Holbridge, and Broomfield. So the, what, basically the mechanic of that is that people will, who shop online can both return and collect parcels um, from, the, um, from, the, from the lockers, it drives footfall to the locations and the, you know, the, the provider of the lockers pay us a, an income. So it's, you know, it drives footfall and there's a commercial benefit as well. We're very much conscious that we do operate in this, this challenging environment. Um, so we're continuing ways to, we'll continue looking for ways to, to improve the day job and try to make it easier and one such initiative is the introduction of a communication and task management platform. Um, it's run by a company called RMS Metro um, and it can be operated from either a PC or a mobile device. The platform has been named by store colleagues um, and they've decided that via a, a survey actually on the platform that it should be called Starlink. Uh, to date the platform will allows every colleague within the business to have their own individual login so they can go onto the platform and look at you know, the most up-to-date news, you know, whether that be an update from anybody, anybody at the centre or on their operational team. But again, it, so it's, it's live and it's available to everybody. In addition to that, we've now started putting basic management tasks on the, on the platform as well. And the aim of this is very much to drive traffic towards the platform. And again, the savings and the tangible benefits there are time and it no longer complete forms on a on paper form. And so again, it's double benefit there. Moving forward, the platform will evolve and become the society's main platform for operations. And to support the platform, the society invested in uh, Android-based handsets that are now in all, all locations, whether that be food, funeral, uh, and department stores. So, you know, they can be now, you know, it's the, it's the piece of equipment that the, the duty manager or the person in charge of that, that unit carries and it's, you know, it's real time live information on it. Department stores. So I think at last year's AGM it was mentioned that, you know, that um, we had a difficulty in attracting new concession partners. I'm pleased to say that the department store team have managed to attract partners throughout the year. And just a couple of examples there are a class Ladies, which is a ladies' fashion brand, and I'm reliably informed it's suitable for all age groups. And, and Lighthouse, again, it's a ladies' fashion brand, and it's in both locations. The work hasn't stopped there, so I think one of the things we've talked about today, whether it be in food or in, in any other area of our business, is whether our retail offer is relevant. Um, so a couple of things that have the work that's been done in our department stores. So moving forward um, in this year, Jay Blades, and again, 
of uh, repair shop and money for nothing fame, he's launched a furniture range. So pleased to say that we're one of only 48 retailers nationally that's been selected to sell this exclusive range. So that launches in, in store in summer um, 23. Katie Loxton, um, again, again, which I'm reliably informed again, is currently very on trend. Uh, and they're, they're generally choosy on who they allow retailers to sell their brand and we've been we've been allowed to work with them uh, French Connection Ladies Calvin Klein Accessories and Wrangler Men so again they're all brands that actually as a business we should be quite pleased to have in our department stores if you then talk about online so the Quadrant Online has been now live for uh, a number of months initially with housewares so in recent weeks uh, there's a number of categories that have now gone online um, and generating some um, potential increased income so that's outdoor living furniture mattresses and bed um, bed linen what I would say is it's not the full range it's a limited range but it's to just to build that awareness and build the credibility of our online offer In funerals, um, Barry's mentioned there that we, we obviously opened our new funeral branch in Basildon uh, last year. What we have done, we've, been, we've formed a relationship with the Westerly Group, who own and operate the Basildon Crematorium. Um, so obviously there is a commercial benefit again to us for this, but also what it does do is enhance our brand and reputation in it, which is still a new uh, trading area for us. And then finally, in travel. So again, it's been mentioned there that the challenges we've faced around recruitment in travel, and for all the reasons that Barry mentioned there around that people have taken a conscious career choice, really, to move away from the travel industry and perhaps go into something that now may seem a little bit high, less high risk. Um, the society haven't been immune to that, has been, has been mentioned. So what we have done is taken a different approach to recruitment. So we've now gone and have uh, recruited a number of junior members of staff which, which we can train and develop um, and actually we get them to become loyal not only to the industry but mainly to the society. So again we've had some success in recent weeks in recruiting uh, trainee travel consultants and uh, an apprentice travel consultant. So I think that's just a very quick sort of snapshot of where we've been, some of the initiatives we've been looking at. So. Just pause for any questions. I'll take that as a, I know, right now, hand over to Kevin. <laughs>